Okay, um, as the, the cliche goes, you had an entire lifetime to, to prepare for the first album and, 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 and significantly less time to prepare for the second. Wow. Um, was there anything, w w was there a major difference between the two in terms of what you put into each? Um, not, not really, because, um, I mean, the first album, um, I toured it for about two years. And so, um, you know, I, I was writing pretty much the whole time, you know. So, so when it came, came around to make the second album, I, I, you know, I think we went into it with about like 30 to 40 songs. So um, I wasn't really sweating it too much, you know. Um, and um, I, I think that's just the key with, with me is just to, to try and keep ahead of myself with the songs just so I'm not in that situation where I have to write under, you know, duress or something. Mm -hmm. The songs all sort of reflect uh, composure, I guess mm. is the word. I mean, that you don't exactly sound like the kind of person that that is fueled by tension or, or, or by, you know, uh, record company demands or studio demands. Um, well, I, I guess not. I mean, it, it, it's... Um, there's been um, pretty stressed out moments in the past uh, year or two, you know, um, but, um, but generally I guess it's not what comes out in, in the songs. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, I don't really know what what, what to say about, about that, you know. Um, You're pretty but, much a person that works at your own pace, but I'm really Yeah, I mean, there's not much... Um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty set in my ways, you know. And just um, in, in what I do, it's such a kind of singular thing that that um, you know, I, I really don't let anything outside, uh, you know, influence too much, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, I think at the same time the songs sort of reflect uh, um, just things I'm trying to work out anyway, you know. Mm -hmm in my life I mean some of them do anyway other songs are more kind of me watching something you know like um, like Clown of Broad Daylight or whatever but um, yeah I guess the best thing is not to think about it too much <laughs> you know listening to, to the first album it sounds like a, a guy just sort of being himself listening to the second album it sounds like a guy even being even more <laughs> himself um, <laughs> I, know, I, I know I know what you mean uh, I mean that's the thi I think that's the big difference of from about you know between the records that this album is just more sure of itself um, you know because the first one I, my main concern was just trying to uh, you know not slow down the process you know because it was my first record for a major label and first time working with you know in the big leagues and uh and so um, i just think my playing and singing you know hopefully has improved just from all the the touring and all that stuff was, was there any external output about how uh, external input i should say about how, how how the second album should be different from the first one um, yeah, I mean, we talked about, I mean, a few, a, a few albums came up in, in conversation that, um, you know, that I, I've always liked, like, the, there's this album, Village Green by the Kinks, and, um, you know, Pet Sounds and things, I mean, not that we wanted to make something that was really, uh, um, elaborate or anything, you know. But but um, the songs that I I had for the second album were were kind of these little songs, you know, these little story songs. And um, so, you know, we we thought it'd be good to make this record that was sort of, you know, concisely uh, arranged, um, kind of like the way that you know the Beatles might have with, um, you know, how maybe an instrument would come in on the bridge of a song and then disappear. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but it was just sort of we we wanted to take each song and and um, and use different uh, combinations of instruments just to just to get that feeling like it was kind of orchestrated mm -hmm. um, these little vignettes. Um, so I mean, again, it's it's sort of hard to, hard to talk about, but uh, it, but that was sort of the basic idea. I mean, that it was kind of an extension because. When we were finishing up the first album, uh, you know, we just we felt like we were just getting started, and then we had this sort of two-year break, you know, before we could sort of resume. 
and um, we were told that uh, by the time you had come to uh, Japan in the autumn of last year, mm -hmm. that most of the material for this second album was was about already completed at that time. A lot of it was. There was um, four brand new songs that I came up with. Um, I, actually, it was more than that, but there was four brand new songs that made it onto the record. Um, kind of at the last minute, about a month before. I mean, there was a song, um, It Never Fails, for example, was I was still writing it, you know, uh, throughout the session, you know, and we just kind of saved it till till near the end. Um, but yeah, the, the majority of the songs I had completed, and, and some of them I was even playing live, so, um, which is, it's kind of good to, to kind of road test them anyway, you know, just to figure out, you know, if, if the if they should remain unrecorded, <laughs> well, you know. I'm kind of, kind of an odd assumption here, but the uh, the guy that wrote the questions was saying that um, you seem to be the type who takes events from your life and, and, and makes songs out of them. You, you seem to put a lot out on the table uh, mm. about yourself. Uh, is, is, yeah. is that true? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd say so. I mean, I, there's probably a bit, bit more of that going on on this on this record you know i mean i i um i don't want to write t t too closely so that um you know if i have a an, an argument with somebody that it turns into a song or anything mm -hmm. but um but yeah i mean i think the first song on the record thinking out loud basically sort of sums up what i do you know and it's just it's just this idea of, of you know I've got these ideas in my head or I've got these melodies in my head and I'm just trying to um, you know just trying to articulate whatever it is that's going on in my head or are going on around me. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean some songs are going to be more personal than others. You know, well, this this guy was uh, was thinking that uh, thinking out loud, you know, it does. <coughs> To talk about your approach, and it, it also seems to suggest that there is a, a, an element of, of hope involved. Mm -hmm. an that you're going an, an, to uh, hope, and that you're going to accomplish something. I guess. Um, I guess that that that's always there. Um, hopefully, you know. Um, I'm just trying. To, I'm just trying to remember how the lyric goes. Um, um, it kind of it kind of ends just. Uh, I think a bit uncertain, but I, I could be wrong. But I mean, generally, um, it's. I think hope is is uh, is, is the kind of um, it's the big word, you know. That I, I guess it's it's. I try to inject it into everything if I can, you know. But without without being. Uh, you know what's the word uh, naive or something you know mm -hmm. um but yeah I, I don't really know quite know how to answer that one but yeah, well, but, I, I, yeah. I don't i don't think people write songs with a with a blueprint in mind necessarily yeah. they sort of yeah. you know pluck, pluck ideas out of thin air and then yeah. uh, hopefully by the end of the song they, they sort of make yeah. sense subconsciously well that song that song for example even though i'm singing i'm singing you know my love i can tell and all that i'm actually i'm not actually even singing to a person or anything i'm just kind of it's um it's just kind of me walking around and i'm just thinking about this this whole concept of of uh you know love or whatever you know and i'm just thinking about how it's it's very easy to get down you know when you see the news or when you see the the, you know, there's a lot of trashy talk shows and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just, I guess that whole song was me just trying to figure out how, I, uh, you know, I can avoid getting sort of sucked into all that, you know, and 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 try to, you know, hopefully the the the, the best will kind of rise, and that kind of, that's sort of the general idea. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that that's a very uh, critical theme in, in, in music and art, you know, so mm -hmm. that, that's what we strive for Yeah. When, when, when we create art, and maybe that's what draws people to art, mm -hmm. there seems to be sort of an idea of a, of a, of a higher a higher ideal, you know, well, a, a better existence. Well, I think that's the thing with, hopefully with music and with art is that, you know, generally I think what comes through is that artists, um, 
uh, you know, highest um, uh, aspirations or the or the best aspects or whatever. You know, um, it's not always easy to live up to them or anything. You know, but um, it's. Uh, yeah, I mean, generally, I, I find I surprise myself sometimes with, you know, because sometimes you don't even know what you're writing about it when you're writing it, you know, and then all of a sudden it turns into this thing that has kind of a meaning to you, you know, and, uh, and you know, the best thing is when it means something to somebody that you don't even know, <laughs> and so that's, I guess that's sort of the payoff. Do you ever get the feeling that you're putting too much of yourself on the table, that you're not holding your cards too close to your, to your chest? Um, yeah, I mean, so, sometimes I find myself in, in the middle of a song where I, I'm afraid to say what I want to say, you know, and, and so I, I maybe I have to kind of uh, tiptoe around certain things or, or whatever. Um, but um, I think that's only natural, you know. Uh, it's just that there's... Um, but you know, as we speak now, I, I think I, hopefully I, I've, there's been a, a, a balance. In, you know, um, I, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to give too much away. Um, so, so I mean, it's hard for me to tell. But I hopefully I'm not, I'm not putting too much of my my, you know, personal life on the line here. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it says in your, your bio that you. Uh, Something about uh, being able to express yourself in music is uh, uh, it, it gives you more of a power to express yourself. You know, yeah, so you're better a better songwriter than you are a talker. Yeah, I mean I've I'm hit and miss with talking. I mean I, I interviews again. You know, there's something that sometimes I find they they go pretty well. You know, it's like anything else. But but um, I mean that's that's you know with songwriting it's, it's a bit of a luxury you know because nobody hears it until it's all done until it's as good as you you want it to be hopefully and so um um so, th so that's the thing that I, I guess i was trying to say there is that with the song uh, i can really think things out and and um and take the time to say exactly what i want to say mm -hmm. you know and to decide what to leave out you know too and what to, you know if i do find myself you know saying too much you know uh, you know about something you know too personal or whatever mm -hmm. before you had the music uh and, uh, to, to deal with this and and the audience to listen to your music uh -huh. how did you, how did you deal with 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 expression did you, like for, for example when you were a child did yeah. you did you find that uh, you had trouble uh uh, interacting with others, or are you just a normal oh. kid? Or, um, well, I'm trying to think back. I mean, actually, on the on the back cover of my new record, there's a picture of me when I was a kid, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's funny when I look at it because I, uh, um, well, you'll you'll see when the record comes out. But it just, uh, you know, I just I'm try It makes it sort of hard for me to to imagine because in the picture I look just kind of like a sad kid. But I don't remember it being that way you know i mean i know that i had friends i, I tended to play with girls uh more than boys for some reason when i was a kid mm -hmm. um but i mean the main thing with me that in terms of you know expression and that when i was a kid was was singing you know and even now if i didn't write anymore um i would still sing because that's really my first love was was just to be able to open my mouth and have a sound coming out of it you know mm -hmm. And I used to try to sing to old, uh, all these old um, uh, Charlie Rich albums, mm -hmm. and you know Buddy Holly, whatever was on the radio. I used to, I, I used to know off by heart. Uh, so that's really, you know, I just remember when uh, everyone else seemed to be playing road hockey on the street. I would, I would just be, you know, zeroing in on the radio and, and mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but like I say, it is a bit foggy looking back. You know, sometimes uh, I'll have these little kind of flashbacks almost, and um, but I never really know if if they're um, accurate or not. You know. Why do you did you feature a, a picture of yourself as a child on your album? Um, it it, it kind of was an accident. It was it was sort of the last thing I wanted to do. Um, I mean, the guy who designed the record. Um, he found all these old pictures of 
that he in 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 pawn shops and things, and he 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 thought it'd be nice to have these old strange pictures, you know, to print beside the lyrics, mm -hmm. and um, and he kept he kept submitting different pictures for the back cover, and there was nothing that really appealed to me very much, and um, this woman who I went to for some advice on the subject she she sort of suggested that you know she said don't you have an old picture of yourself you can put on the back and and it was really literally the only picture i had of myself as a, as a kid mm -hmm. and um and it, it seemed it just seemed to fit because on the record there's a song called child star mm -hmm. and there's a song <coughs> um called so young and um and the song Strawberry Blonde, which was sort of based on a few different people that I knew growing up. And so it just seemed to kind of to to fit, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, so it was just one of those uh, accidents. Hmm. <coughs> the, the, the imagery involving uh, youth and, and children in your music, do you hmm. think that represents innocence? Or w w when you think of childhood, what, what comes to mind? Um... I, I guess it sort of represents a, a time when uh, you know your troubles are are kind of smaller. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know when um, even though they may seem big at the time, you know. I mean, generally, um, I mean, I I, uh, I I had a pretty happy childhood. I think you know mm -hmm. because I um, my I had a good. I mean, my mom did a good job, and I had my brothers with me and everything. Um, you know, so I probably was, you know, uh, the best time, you know, and I think it, it you know, it, it is for a lot of people. Um, it, and, you know, even, um, I mean, I know there's a lot of tragic childhoods and all that kind of stuff, you know, but I mean, um, I guess it represents a bit of a, a bit of that, the, you know, innocence or, or whatever. Um, I, I, again, I don't think about it too much when I when I write. I mean, um, the song "So Young" was just something that I, I came up with um, at, at a playground just a few, you know, a few years ago. I was just um, I was on the swings and I was just sort of redoing something I hadn't done in a long time, and I'd sort of, for, you know, forgotten how much fun it was, you know, and I was just sort of, it seems to be a common thing with most people, it's just that, uh, it's like when you're a kid, you know, you, you, you can imagine lots of things and you can daydream and, and pretend and um, and it seems real and then uh, you, can, you get to a certain age when you don't do it anymore and um, and it's, a, it's kind of sad in a way, you know, um, so it's just, uh, it's just trying to remember so some of those those uh, feelings and that you know. being being able to like uh, live with an element of, of fantasy in your life but not be inhibited by it yeah yeah I mean to just to um, uh, yeah I mean I guess just to, to have an op open mind uh, because um, yeah because those things are real those uh, uh, fears that you had or those emotions that you had and mm -hmm. and uh, and it's it all comes back to you sometimes you know and um, you know but again you know it, it's just like it's trying to fight off it's not trying to fight off aging or anything we're just trying to fight off these things that make you old inside you know um, I guess that's something that I'm trying to um, I, I, I'm sort of up in arms again, <laughs> you know. What you say you're you're up in arms against maybe a sense of jadedness among adults. That's it. Yeah, I mean that's really it. You know, it's that whole thing. Where, I mean, cynicism is such a um, a useless way to be. Really, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't amount to much, and it's, and um, and it's so. Um, what's the word? It's so um, contagious, you know, and. Because it's it's kind of easy to kind of put things down all the time or to be that that way, and there's so much of it these days. It kind of uh, it's in the music and it's in the you know on the TV shows, and um, I don't think at the same time it, it's it's a good idea to be overly optimistic either. You know, I I think. Um, I just think it's, uh, uh, you know, to be realistic is, is, is probably the way to be, um, you know, 
just to, to be honest with yourself and uh, it's you know even though it sounds kind of cliche you know. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you you have uh, you have one child now two children uh, I've got two and how old are they um, 12 and 7 do you find just some parents find themselves recalling <clears throat> their own childhood when they when they start to, 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 to raise kids because you remember things that you had forgotten about do you think you, you, you relive your, your youth through your children at all um, yeah, it happens, you know, we get to, to re-experience things that you were excited about, like, uh, Christmas, or things like that, mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, we, we get a lot of snow here, so I, I get to, you know, uh, you know, toboggan and stuff like that in the winter time, which, uh, you know, I hadn't done for years until I had my, my kids, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's just a lot of things that, that, uh, uh, you know that they're experiencing for the first time, and it kind of makes you relive it. And uh, um, I mean, right now my kids are kind of, like I say, they're getting a bit older to 12 and 7. And uh, but I mean, there's always these new, new phases that they go through, and, it, and you kind of sometimes uh, it takes you back and think, oh yeah, I remember that that whole thing, you know, and how hard it was or whatever. Um, I think it's a lot harder now, you know, for kids. Mm -hmm. But why is it harder now? It just seems to be harder, and um, there's not as much you can depend of, depend on these mm -hmm. days. It seems, you know, with you know the, the way everything is changing, with with the kind of you know work um, that's out there. You know, you just seem to have to 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 know more in a way. You know, um, and the, it just seems to be a, a more a scarier time too to be a kid, you know. Mm -hmm. It seems to be more, uh, you know, just the whole idea of letting your kids go off somewhere by themselves, which you know I used to do all the time. I used mm -hmm. to walk to school when I was a good five or six, you know, which I it's kind of unthinkable now, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it just it just seems uh, it just seems harder in general, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And you, you got started pretty early, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, fatherhood. It's, it's, you're about yeah. 33 now, and if your mm -hmm. son is 12, you had your first child at 21. Yeah, yeah. Which is very young. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I say, it wasn't something, uh, you know, it's not something that I, I planned to be a father that young, you know. Mm -hmm. It just kind of came came about, and, uh, you know, and it, it's, it's not always, you know, it wasn't easy, that's, that's for sure. But I mean, um, it's worked. It's worked out so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you were talking talking about childhood and youth there, but obviously, you know, there are different phases throughout childhood. And so young seems to refer to uh, uh, puberty years. Hmm. A, li uh, a little bit. I mean, um, again, I was just thinking about the song came about at the playground. I was just thinking about how we're all kind of. Uh, you know, born the same way, we're all kind of sort of touched the, uh, you know, the same way in the beginning, and and um, um, and these sort of there's kind of these reoccurring themes throughout, out, you know, every generation, you know, and uh, that was sort of I was thinking about all these things and trying to to bring it down to a kind of a small scale. So it's not really about puberty so much. It's just. Um, Again, just trying to remember, um, you know, things that you um, that you felt, or uh, you know, it's just kind of trying to away, you know, awaken these lost uh, senses or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, I was on the swings when I wrote that song. It's something that. Uh, you know, you get to a certain age where if you do that, you start to feel kind of sick, <laughs> you know. And and I just remember one day I was on it, and I, and I kept I kept thinking, well, I'm just going to keep doing this until it does, until it, you know, it feels it goes away, right? This sort of sick feeling, and it did, you know. And I just sort of felt that um, I was just kind of out of practice, and uh, so I mean, all this stuff doesn't really you know mean very much in the end. It's just sort of that's where the song. Mm. That's where it started, you know. Mm -hmm. So you okay? It sounds like you're getting. No, I just gave my my daughter a kiss goodnight there. Huh. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> if you if you if you could go back, uh, you know, and 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 bestow on yourself at the time the wisdom of your years now, what, what sort of advice would you would you give yourself? What when for what what age? <laughs> like when, well, just say, uh, say when you were. Oh, I don't know. This is the the, the age your your older child is. Um. Well, it's hard to say. I don't know that I would. Uh, Are there any situations that come to mind where you know you could you could have benefited at the, at the time from your uh, from the experience? I guess there's certain experiences. You know, when I got a little bit older and started, you know, having crushes on girls and all that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, I was a pretty when I when I got around 12 or 13. I I think I was pretty. Uh, you know, shy in general. I don't really like that word very much, but I think that was basically, you know, um, uh, yeah, I just didn't really know how to, you know, how to talk to uh, to girls and stuff like this, right? That was sort of an awkward time mm-hmm. where I think now, um, it was really strange because, like I say, when I was small, I, I hung around mostly with girls, and all of a sudden I get to this age where, you know, I, I just didn't know what to say or didn't know how to act and all that kind of stuff. And that was probably, looking back, you know, you know, teenage years are hard for everybody. You yeah. know, um, um, yeah, I really don't, I really don't know. I'd have to think about it some more to, 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 uh, you know. Okay, okay, don't, don't dwell on yeah. it. It says here that you, don't, you, uh, in the press release, that you don't care much for recording in the studio. Um, mm-hmm. I, I guess for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the the greatest uh, satisfaction comes when you actually come up with a song. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not that I don't like uh, being in the studio, but it. I mean, I love working with Mitchell and Chad and everything. Um, but I mean, that's basically the 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 thing that I like the most is when I find myself in the middle of a bunch of songs. You know, even though I don't know when they're going to be finished or anything, it's just the idea. Because whenever I finish a batch of songs, there's always a scary feeling that maybe that's it, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and so, um, like, right at, at the moment, I'm in the middle of a, of a bunch of songs that I'm excited about. And um, it's kind of a, you know, it's just a relief. And and, uh, and then, yeah, I mean, when you get to the point when you're they're finally at, they're, they're done pretty much and you can uh, actually play them for people, that, that to me, it doesn't really... Um, get much better than that, you know. I mean, it's a, it's a great thing when you get into a studio and um, and it comes together. I mean, on this record, there was about two or three songs that gave us a hard time, but for the most part, things ran really smoothly, and and it was, um, you know, it was fun. I mean, the thing I don't like about being in the studio is when it, like, when you do have those bad days where you just start doubting that the song's no good, and and you just start. You know, you just sort of feel uh, kind of, you know, humiliated <laughs> by the whole thing, and and that's what I I don't like about it because uh, sometimes you just don't know what's wrong. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, can we take about a one minute time out here, uh, yeah. Ron? Because I I this is our interview day here, and I'm I have an interview scheduled right now. I'm just going to call the guy and tell him, you know, mm-hmm. I need another 15 minutes or so. Okay. And, uh, yeah, why don't you just, if you could just take a breather and leave the line open. Okay. And I, I'll just set the phone down and use another phone and come back in about a minute. Okay. Yeah, okay, thanks. No problem. Okay, hold on just a second.
Ron? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Okay. No problem. Yeah, just I, I, the, they wanted to do a, 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 an extensive interview with you, and, you know, we have about maybe 40 minutes total. I wanted just to make sure to c cover all the questions here. Yeah, no, no trouble. Great, great. Um, let's see, where were we then? Um, uh, th th there was a, there was a uh, a question about um, oh this this guy mentioned strawberry blonde uh -huh. um, and he says that uh, it's indicative of your style in that it seems to almost uh, be about a person crying about something and not really shedding tears over it you know oh. l lamenting about something I guess would be the word. Oh, well, I, I had a hard time writing that song because I was trying to, um, like I said, there was a few different people in mind when I wrote it. Mm -hmm. There was about three or four different people, and I was trying to write a story that, um, I was originally trying to write the whole thing in two verses and mm -hmm. be more vague about it mm -hmm. because it was sort of a sad story, you know, And mm -hmm. but I didn't want to make write it in a way that was, you know, taking advantage of people's emotions or anything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know i mean i guess the, the you know the, the thing that i wanted to come through was just the idea that uh, that how strong um uh children can be you know because some like i say some kids you know we're all born in different circumstances you know and some kids have a lot of stuff to deal with but generally they come through you know mm -hmm. because they're pretty resilient and um and that's what I was thinking of, and I think ultimately in the in in the last verse, you know, it's just even though all these, you know, in the song it sort of fast forwards years down the road. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is that she survives, you know, and that she has a kid of her own, and that whole life goes on thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but um, but yeah, I guess uh, I guess maybe that is something that's you know in my my songs in general it's, it's hard to say you know i mean the last thing i ever want to do is uh depress people you know or or uh, you know milk milk them any you know emotion out of everything you yeah, know yeah. But, mm -hmm. i was just trying to i mean it was just a story like i say that was based on a few stories and i was just trying to tell it and and without you know just w w without the uh without over dramatizing it mm -hmm. yeah. is, is that the type of thing that uh, is, is typical of your your recollections do your recollections tend to lean towards those sort of uh, um, you know, uh, uh, t touching tales or, or sadness or well i just think those the, those kind of uh episodes are just tend uh, I think are the, because they sort of touch us are the ones that I think we we remember. So you know, um, I mean, and uh, you know, hopefully the, the happy things too. But um, I think maybe the sadder stories are um, maybe they're a bit more interesting or something. Or <laughs> I, 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 make 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 better fodder. I, I, I guess so. But again, it wasn't uh, like I say. It's never my intention to do that. It was just. Um, like I say, I really had a hard time writing. It took me about a year and a half to f to finish the song. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I, uh, you know, again, just trying to bring all these different stories together and and without, you know, trying to make it into this my own thing. And um, uh, but I mean, you know, there's stuff like Clown of Broad Daylight, which really isn't sad at all or anything you know it was just um you know just something i saw i was on a bus i just looked out the window you know and if you never really know what is gonna set it off you know yeah. and it's just sort of once you've got the idea then it's that's when the work comes in that's when you kind of have to s figure out you know where the song or you know what what you're trying to say and, and all that how about in, in, in Average Joe? Uh, this guy makes oh. some, some assumptions here. Like he, he mm. talks about Costello and uh, Costello's Man Out of Time. Uh, Cost Elvis Costello once said that you know, man out of, he has the song Man Out of Time, and, uh, yeah. and it was about the type of fan that he identifies with, you know, a guy who 
is kind of you know out of out of, out of sync with what's happening now, but uh, yeah. you know knows, knows what he likes. And uh, yeah. in, in your case, is, is his average Joe will refer to uh, the same kind of thing? Well, um, basically, I mean that song I was kind of writing about myself in a way. Not that I think I'm an average Joe or that I think anybody is, but it was just, um, um, you know, I was on this tour um, in, the, in the States that wasn't going very well. I just, you know, I just didn't feel like I even existed, you know. I wasn't, um, I wasn't in, in the ads or anything. Mm -hmm. And um, so I remember just walking around. I was in Nashville when I wrote the song. I was kind of homesick and... Uh, I was just feeling kind of like a loser, and uh, that's when I saw this this tour bus come down the street, and it and it said um, at the front of it, "Nobody you would know," right? And it just kind of it was like comic relief for me, you know. I just started thinking about that's kind of how I felt at the time, you know, and, uh, and that's sort of where the song started. And I was just sort of. Um, I was just thinking about just this whole idea of what I do. I'm sort of touring around, and, um, you know, like in the second verse, I was writing about a time where I got so, sort of ripped off in New York City, you know, because I was kind of naive. And um, So, I mean, that's basically where that song came from, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's something at the end about it, being gratified by having somebody who thinks of you as more than the average joke. <laughs> well, yeah, I get, that was, again, uh, sometimes you write, you start writing these songs and you're trying to figure out, well, how am I going to end it, you know? And I guess that's that was the, sort of the, the general idea, is that sometimes you, I go on the road and it and it goes well, but other times you, you just have this, this disastrous tour where you just feel like you've been through a war or something, and then finally, you know, the sort of, uh, you know, it's, it's the coming home that it's sort of, it becomes what it's all about, you know, you just can't wait to get home because there's, you know, people there that, um, that, you know, uh, or just extra strength, I mean, there's, you know, people there that are counting on you and sort of, um, and they sort of, it, it, it's why you're doing it, you know, and it, it, it uh, so I guess that was the general idea. And this, it sort of uh, has kind of a, a pet sound kind of sound to it. Well, that was sort of more of an accident than anything. Because like I said, I wrote it in as a sort of a yodeling kind of country song. Mm -hmm. And um, when we got in the studio, we were just sort of rocking it out. And, um, you know, I did a couple of passes on the vocals. And, and when we, um, you know, because I guess the melody kind of, goes all over the place you know once we heard it sort of double tracked with another vocal it just you know it just seemed to want to go in that direction mm -hmm. and then you know with the keyboards and everything um but um but yeah that was sort of an unexpected treat for me because you know like i say it felt more like a randy newman thing when mm -hmm. when i first came up with it oh, okay oh, hold on for one second mm -hmm. okay Come on. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the pet sounds to you. This well, the guy here describes it himself as uh, uh, the sound of a, an e echo re resounding through the heart. Is, is how he refers to pet sounds. Uh -huh. what, what does pet sounds represent to you? Well, he, the funny thing about pet sounds is, is it's still kind of a new album for me because mm -hmm. the first time I'd even heard pet sounds was like last. Um, I mean, not last Christmas, but the Christmas before. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I was always into the Kinks and that. I never really paid much attention to the Beach Boys. Mm -hmm. And um, but I, but but you know, I kept hearing about Pet Sounds, and finally I borrowed it off of this fellow who was playing bass for me. And it just totally. Uh, I mean, it just made me feel so many different things. I mean, it made me feel like, on one hand, giving up, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And on the other hand, you know, obviously it was just really, really um, inspiring, that, you know. Um, just just that everything about it, you know, the words and the melodies, it just they didn't seem to be anything 
false about it anywhere, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, so now it's become, t uh, uh, you know, very important album for me, you know. Th and it's sort of, it's kind of strange coming to me this late, you know, in my life. Mm -hmm. Here's a an abstract question. Um, okay. What uh, What do you think you want to retain? about your own heart, about your own emotions. But what, what do you not want to lose? Maybe this overlaps with what we were talking about a little while ago. You we were talking about not, not becoming jaded and not, becoming, yeah. not, not allowing yourself to give in to cynicism. Well, um, I mean, I, I guess, you know, I mean, there's probably already, you know, stuff that I've lost along the way, but, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, as a songwriter, I, I'd, I'd like to... Um, Try to stay focused on on what it is that I um, that I I do well, you know, because I think there's been certain writers in the past they they get to a certain point where they just seem to lose it, you know, mm -hmm. they kind of lose touch of, about what was great about their early work or whatever, and um, I don't really know how to do that exactly, but that's a something that's something that I, I just try to make sure that. Um, uh, try to keep things on a small scale. Mm -hmm. Try to keep things uh, uh, kind of un, uh, diluted in a way, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I, I just keep thinking if I just go on the, the way I have been, you know, if I keep walking, being by myself, and 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 just um, you know humming to myself all the things that have. Um, that, that I do to, to come up with these songs, and I should be all right, you know. I guess it means being honest with yourself. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, I think that's just something that, um, you know, I, I, I think people can tell when, when you're trying to pull something over, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, I, and I guess that's, in, in a way, with the, the, it's like this contract you make with the listener, because it's really hard when you're a singer-songwriter. It's not like there there is an audience for you. You have to kind of win people over one one by one, and um, it's just the idea that they they kind of you know believe it. You know they believe that you're this is um, you know that this isn't some kind of act or anything, and uh, um, so yeah. So I, I'm. I'm I just try to, like I say, with with each record, to me, it, it, it starts with the song, you know. Mm -hmm. And and as long as I keep writing, um, uh, you know, I may not always make great records, you know. I mean, it's you never really know, right? With each record, you just you start with the song and you try to sing good and and you try to give each song what it needs. Um, and but just as long as the people know that that. Um, you know that that I would I would never want to record a song if I didn't think it was good. You know, or mm -hmm. put out an album if I didn't think it was worth hearing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. <coughs> Here, here's a left field observation. Mm -hmm. uh, even though people can tell the difference between right and wrong, they they do what's wrong anyway. Do you think, yeah. Do you basically think that people are very silly? Um. I'm not going silly. Well, I, I guess you can stand back, but that's I think where the cynicism, you know, comes in. You know, it's, it's easy to laugh at people because we're, you know, we're, we're, there's so many foolish things to, that we do right on a day-to-day -day basis, and um, you know, you always and it's like there isn't even any original mistakes anymore. It's always people making the same mistakes. Um, nobody ever seems to learn from them, and I certainly don't. And uh, so I mean, um, but it's kind of like every day, and you get a chance, you know, to start to start over. And uh, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess I guess we're uh, we're we're pretty laughable as a you know as a species, or whatever you want to call us. You know, I don't know. Do you think maybe that uh, that, that people should be? Uh, loved and appreciated because of their foibles. Or? I think so. I mean, I'm always attracted to people's limitations, you know. And um, most of my favorite artists, the people I respect the most, as 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 humans, were very kind of uh, messed up, you know. They were very fragile. Or they, um, uh, you know, yeah, they were just 
they were they were just out of their minds, you know, a lot of them. And um, but but it was yeah, it, it was kind of like with Brian Wilson, you know. There was a guy who had a really hard childhood and who got really messed up, but he made um, you know all these beautiful songs, you know. And it, it was kind of like something good came out of it, you know. Um, and it, I, think, I think that's the thing. It's just trying to, it's just, I think that's the, the inspiring thing about humans is that they keep uh, trying, you know, and uh, and that's, you know, that that's uh, uh, something to uh, applaud, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you, do you, is this was a strange observation here about how, you, you know, you, you can uh, maybe appreciate the foibles of people because, uh, human existence is sort of based on a, a, this idea of sadness, this idea that, that, that tomorrow will bring nothing with it, oh. and that, that you know we, we that therefore we should you know appreciate what we have. Yeah, but that's not really reflective of your philosophy of life at all, is it? Um, I, I'm I'm really not I'm really not sure. I mean, I, I think it. it um, what would you say mine would be? <laughs> I mean, I I don't I don't really know. You know, it's it's like. Uh, it, that's something that that I try to tell myself uh, often. You know, um, is, is to you know take the time right to appreciate the good things because you know I get bummed out a lot about the way things are going or or you know the money problems or whatever it is. And and uh, but I mean, there's always there's always some some someone who's having a real hard time that. You know, um, and, and and just um, just be able to do what I do and and all these kind of things, you know. But I think that's the key, just you know, for everybody, just to to try and and uh, you know, be thankful uh, for a, a, a number of things, you know, on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, Last two brief questions here. Okay. The first one is: Do you remember the first? song you, you, you ever wrote? Um, that's a hard one because uh, I was trying to write songs when I was like 14 and 15 <laughs> but there's nothing I could you know play you now that would sound like a song. I mean the, the first time I ever wrote anything that I was proud of was a song that I wrote called On the Beach mm-hmm. and um, um, I wrote it I guess it must have been around 80, 82 or something. And um, it was kind of like this sprawling, kind of jazzy song, um, really romantic. Um, but it was the first time that, um, you know, some of my friends who didn't think my songs were very good started, you know, saying, oh, that one's pretty nice, you know, I like that one. Mm-hmm. And it sort of gave me the idea that maybe I could write songs someday, you know. Mm-hmm. But it took me a few years even after that to... Uh, sort of convince myself, you know. Mm-hmm. A creative breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah. And this this last one, this is a little bit odd. Um, mm-hmm. um, what is what kind of song do you think will be the last song you 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 ever sing? <laughs> wow! Oh my God! <laughs> last song I ever sing? You yeah. mean, what do you mean, like in a shower or on the record or what? <laughs> I mean, that's like, that's the last song, like your 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 dying song. You know? Wow! Jeez, that's a <laughs> that's something else. Um, I would pass on that one. <laughs> Jeez, one more for the road or something? I don't know. <laughs> right. It's kind of hard to time those things, you know? Like, yeah. Who's going to know it's the last song? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess the answer to that one is, you know, who, who could possibly know? Yeah. Uh-huh. Hopefully it's one of mine, you know? <laughs> I don't want to do it covered. I don't want to do no. it <laughs> Okay, well, Ron, I think I've, I've basically covered all the questions here. Okay. Uh, we can probably put together a pretty good four page out of this. Wow. And I'm, I'm sorry that uh, things uh, didn't work out in the case. Yeah, I'm just uh, disappointed that my, my, the label or whoever is supposed to tell me about these things, unless they, they faxed me something and I lost it. Yeah. So, but, uh, well, um, well, let me get over to my next guy here who's okay. been waiting around 20 minutes, and so All right. hopefully you'll still be there for me. Well, I'm supposed to be there in October or November, so hopefully I'll see Great. you well, guys all down there. This is, again, this has been for Rocky on Magazine, and my name mm. is Steve Harris. All right. And uh, look forward to seeing you uh, in the the fall. Great. Okay, well, take care then. Yeah, you too. Take care. Bye-bye.